ladies and gentlemen, it's Gregory again with her and a little unboxing. Uh, as you can see, it's another paper panzer, and it's the uh, Trumpeter German E100 Super Heavy Tank. Let's get that glare off there. There we go, and it's a nice bit of art box work again, box artwork even. It's a nice uh, looking beast. As you can see, so it's the obviously 135 trumpeter kit, and the length of the kit when made is 326.52 millimeters. The width is 127.77 millimeters, and the height is 107.53 millimeters. And it only has 102 parts, so it's you know a fairly fairly easy kit to put together, and obviously has a bit of a bit of PE as well for the engine grills and one thing or another. So, we'll have a look at the box art, we've seen the box art on that side, it's the same on that side and on the other side it's the same, but on this side we have a couple of colour call outs, I'm just telling you there's a bit of PE, a bit of that glare, just a bit of PE and a couple of uh, colour call outs for that side, and on the other side we have a picture of the finished model. It gives you a little bit of information there. If I hold that there you won't be able to read a little bit of it. So if you want to pause and read that and maybe we could be closer for you. There we go. So, let's uh, have a look what we've got inside the box. I'll say I've, had a little, I've had a quick look through it, but uh, I haven't actually taken any screws out of any bags yet, so we shall get rid of this box. Pop that down there, and we shall start, as we normally do, with the first screw out of the top of the box. Where's my knife as well now? This looks like it's part of the uh, which is part of the gun, and that's the underneath of the uh, turret. So you can see it's rather on the large side. A bit of the gun mantle, a bit of the interior gun mantle, the you know the breech inside. Uh, some more hatches, commander's cupola. Let me just see if I can bring this little light up here a bit further and swing this one across so we can put a light on the subject. As you can see it's all nicely moulded again, nice and clean, crisp, no no flash to you know on these newer kits. Well this isn't actually a, it isn't a new kit, the actual age I should have said that shouldn't I? I think it's a fairly old kit. Let me have a look on the box, it usually tells you when they're made. I probably won't on this one. It's got copyright 2017, but I don't think that's the um, when this kit was created. I think it's, it's in the it's in the 2000s anyway, so it, it, it's not brand new. Put it that way. But as you can see, the, uh, the gun is rather it's a two-piece barrel, but they're again so simple to clean up. Just spend that little bit of time and effort on it, and you won't tell the difference. Yeah, some little bits and pieces there, more gun parts. Fire extinguisher, that fire extinguisher is quite nice. The detail on the little fire extinguisher. That, is quite, that really is quite nice. It's one of the better ones, that. It really is. And there's some hatches, little small pieces. Does that look like a piece of. I don't know what that is. Looks like a piece of chain, doesn't it? Excuse the grubby fingers, I've been uh, painting this morning, spray painting, so they're a bit uh, grubby. But yeah, so it's a nice, nice start to the kit. It's nicely, there's, there's no texture on any of it because I don't think there was any. And the next sprue is, is the side, the side skirts. 
course you can see the rather than the large side again I think everything on this tank on the large side the side skirts they're quite uh, they're quite large you can see where the bolt detail on there for how it's fastened there's a little bit of texture a little but I'll probably use a bit of Mr. Surface of 5,000 uh, 500 5,000 uh, just to make it uh, stand out a little bit I think and we have some small more hatches and there's the rear plates rear for the uh, more hatches for the torques to be attached to I think these parts are looking to, to go on um, makes it look how thick the actual armour was but I think these are fastened onto the actual hole on the outside to give you that sort of feeling of how thick the uh, the plating was on this tank and there's a couple of, bit of pioneer tools you know the spear, the hammer, shovel fire extinguisher and another fire extinguisher hmm I think we do but, uh, and there's the exhausts a couple more hatches again and this long part here is to do with the suspension the uh, this is placed on the up on the turret on the turret on the lower hull and I think if you can quite see you can't quite see can you where no you can't because of the uh, yeah you can see where the uh, attaching points are I think that's some of the to do with the uh, the suspension springs that are attached up there but there again nicely molded again no in, no 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 flash anywhere no injection marks, what injection marks are rather in the back, so not to be seen. So, right, this sprue here, we have two sprues the same, which is obviously going to be the running gear. So let's get one out, there's no point in getting both on, so I'll have to, because it won't come out of the bag otherwise. And these are nicely molded again, nice detail on the wheels. You can see how they're quite a large wheel as well. If you can see my, you know, my hands aren't very small, but uh, they're large on the large side. And they're obviously some of the suspension arms, swing arms, transmission hub, part of the idler wheel by looking at it. And again, idler wheel, I think it's a three piece idler wheel. Couple of uh, hubs for the uh, for the road wheels, track uh, track holders, couple of grab handles, more wheels, a vent cover for the engine for the uh, um, air intake fan thing, whatever it is. So, so there's two of those. I said nicely molded again. It's a nice detail on the uh, on the hubs as well. Nicely risen. The actual uh, bolt heads are nice and pronounced which is good and the wheels themselves they're nicely uh, risen again so you can take the uh, like take a nice wash not too shallow and they're obviously uh, all metal rims so that'll have to be uh, rubbed around with the old metalizer to get the metal on it and then we have another sprue with more running gear and the suspension springs and the idler and spare track to go on the uh, so two of these and as you can sell, see again lovely detail the springs look really really nice they're not a lot of plastic there's quite a nice detail on them obviously more wheels we have the uh, exhaust covers the shackles More wheels, spare track link for the for the turret. A nice sprocket as well, nicely detailed sprocket again. As you can see by the size of the sprocket, it's uh, it's quite a large sprocket. Yeah, nice, nice again. So as you can see, it's a simply it's a simple kit to put together. Nothing, nothing really too much to it. Right, let's have a look at the uh, the remaining pieces. First, we have the uh, the 
turret as you can see it's at another size and a half there's a nice bit of texture on there a little bit of if you can just look on top of it you see where the uh, it's been weld seam all the way along there there's a slight bit of texture on there again not not massive amount so I might have to do a little bit on that but the detail is quite nice on it though you know on the, on the ends and on the uh, so I just sort of represent the thickness of the thickness of the mantle on the front. Again, on the rear, obviously there's not much on the rear at the moment that'll be built up. Obviously this is for the rear hatch. But that again, you've got that nice cut steel at the ends, and obviously the mantle in the front. Nice deep, yeah. That's, it's got a slight texture, it's not, it's not completely smooth, but I think it could just add a little bit more. Not massive, it's just enough sort of to you know, make it stand out a bit more. But yeah, not bad at all, not bad at all. Uh, and then we have the, the tracks and all the vinyl tracks again, but they're similar to the e Stug, the fact that they're the same as the, uh, the Stug 100 as well, and the hollow guide horns on them. Uh, nicely detailed on the inside again, but they just look a bit flat on the outside. But I've got the. Um, I'm going to try these on the. I might even try them on this one first, and if they're any good, I'll buy another one. The uh, trumpeter tracks that I showed you on the e E100 Stug. So, yeah, the detail is. is I wouldn't say they were rubbish, but. I'm, I, I don't know. I'll have to see when I get to it. I probably will try these on this kit just to see. But on the other one, I wanted to make it more pronounced on the um, the stuff because I was thinking about leaving quite a few of the uh, covers off so you could see the track. There's no injection. There's a couple of little injection marks. We can quite make them out. There we are. Right there. Just one there. You see that one there? That is enough to get out. Really, they're going to see them in here. There's one, two. About five, but there again, once the tracks are joined together, you're not going to notice that. It says it's going to be glued together, but they never do, so I think it'll be just the old, that's normal, melt them together. So, obviously, there's two of those, and in the, you can see this is the uh, the low hole. Obviously, all the injection marks are inside, pretty plain, obviously. Uh, on the outside there's quite a lot to stick on the outside so there's not a great lot of detail on there. On the bottom we have quite a lot of escape hatches and covers and one thing or another nicely detailed. Uh, like you see it's, it's quite a large size again. So all these E1s are all on the same chassis with just a different upper hull on each one. So but yeah and I like this the way they've packed this, uh, if I show you the box they've packed the actually up a hole into a nice you know, protection. That's quite a nice idea. Put it out of the way better, wouldn't it? I do like that. It's quite a nice touch. It takes a bit of the hole, as you can see from the size again. It's, it's uh, on the last side. It's got nice for the headlight. That's quite nicely detailed again. At least I've actually put them on and a lot of kids don't actually have these on at all and you have to sort of make your own. The detail is quite nice again with the uh, turret ring at the teeth in there. A slight bit of texture again on the upper hull. Nice weld seams running along the top to the bottom and everywhere else. And these are the parts for the um, side skirt stuff we've fastened onto as well. Yeah. Hatches to be put on, obviously, in the rear. I like the uh, actually put the fans in so when you put the little cover on the top, you can see these. So, for a nice bit of could take a little bit of weather in, you might be able to see them through the thing. Only one way to find out is give it a go. But yes, as you can see, it's a fairly straightforward kit, nothing too uh, too difficult in it. So, we shall get what's left in the box out. And then again, we have a so let's pop this box over there for now. Down on the floor. Well, and we'll go through the last few bits and pieces. Especially we have the, uh, the PE again for the uh, same again, it's just the engine covers. 
which are nice, nice and these are quite thick again obviously because the, uh, the tank is uh, on a large size so you, know, you don't want them too thin otherwise they'll just sort of raise up and start peeling away but then again nice and it's got uh, 2007 on here so presumably this is sort of a rough time when the kit was produced so 2007 on the on that sprue on the uh, sorry the PE threat and then we have a lot of them don't give you details on the first one I made there's no decals but the uh, Some decals for this one, fair enough, there's only a couple of numbers, but I'm going to speak to you about decals in a second. Um, this is quite nicely you not know, trumpet to decals, I've never had any problem with trumpet to decals at all, and I've built quite a few trumpet to kits. As you can see, there are they're fine, nothing wrong with them again, perhaps a little bit shiny, but there's no carrier film really close to the numbers on the and the crosses. Oh, it's a little bit shiny, but you can always dull, dull them down in the end, so it's not a problem. So, with, with the decals, I've just purchased and got it received it this morning. So I thought I'd give it a go. Here's the Voyager model. I'll take it out the back so you don't get the... Uh, never opened it yet, so let's have a look what we've got. Let's have a look what we've got. So that's the extensive kit for German markings. So what we have here if we can ever get them out the bag I think I'll find another bag to put them back into this red is we have a PE well metal more than anything let's have a look get rid of that and as you can see these are metal masks so you can spray the numbers, the crosses, the certain regiments, you've got a couple of them for the Africa Corps, all of the bits and pieces that you normally see in a German tank. This is, uh, it's only thin but you don't want to, obviously it's a thin, there's quite a variant of different things on there. Now again these weren't expensive, I think I paid about £10 for them off, uh, I'll leave the link in the site, I think I left it on the, uh, I'm stuck one under, but I'll leave it again. The uh, link to the uh, the stencils, if anybody's interested in buying them. So I think this is this is template two. There's a template one which I uh, I'll probably get eventually. But uh, as you can see, they're quite nice, aren't they? I'll just spray them on and mask them round, and they're quite nice instead of putting decals on all the time. But obviously, there's a bit of a an instruction leaflet of how to use them, which is quite nice. And we shall pop these back in here. If I can get them back in again, let's take this staple out of here. And then we're not fighting with it all the way along. Like we are now. Come on. Oh, I'll do it off camera later on. And then finally we have the, uh, the instructions, which are fairly Standard procedure for, for a trumpeter. This time there's no colour call out that I've come across yet, which which is a shame, but we've got a few colour call outs on the side of the box, so it does help. Obviously, we have uh, do's and don'ts and little uh, symbols of what they, are, what, they, what they actually mean, like weight and remove and glue and don't glue and things like that. And deckling and a bit of tells you how to do with decals. Oh, tell a lie. Have done again, haven't I? With a sprue map, as you can see, there's not many sprues. Very straightforward. In fact, I may knock this on the head quickly. One, you know, a quick build. As you can see, it's quite a uh, large tank. There's a couple of marking options there. Uh, as you can see, I think I fancy the bottom one more than the top one. We shall see when we get to it. I think that's the only option there is, there's nothing on the back, there's nothing on the back, but it's nice again from Trump and sorry I won't jump the gun and said there wasn't. But as you go, it's fairly straightforward, low hole, low hole again, nice nice large diagrams with nothing over complicated and 
you know, nicely laid out, fairly easy to follow. I'd say really easy, nice, easy key for a beginner to do actually, to be perfectly honest. A wheel assembly, and there again, and there's the piece of the runabout that clicks onto the upper hole, the lower hole to represent sort of the thickness of the end of the, uh, the cuts from the um, lower hole, hollow hole. These parts here, which I was on one of before, there and there. It just gives you the definition of the, uh, the put onto the ends of the uh, lower hull to give you the metal cut I think again on the ends, which is quite nice. Um, and then we're starting with the sprocket and the idler assembly, and then we'll be the tracks, which are it does uh, can be glued, but I've never had never ever had any success, so I'll probably just do the old melting of the uh, things on top, and then we start on the uh, the upper hull with all the hatches and vents and grill covers and the PEs attached, the grab handles and the, the uh, pioneer tools and the vision blocks, guards, and then at the back again, pioneer tools, bolt cutters, fire extinguishers, lifting hooks. And then it's a matter of attaching the uh, lower hull to the upper hull, and then the back plate is made up. Uh, there we are, there we are. Very straightforward again. And then attaching the uh, rear plate to the upper hull. And then again, finishing it off by putting the shackles onto the bottom of the um, lower hull. And then we're starting off with the breech for the uh, for the gun. It's a fairly straightforward kit. It could be done in an afternoon. This kit could be built easily in an afternoon. And then we start with the turret, which you see there's the breech on the inside, you're not going to see anything in there, so it'll be just fastened up. And there's the attachment of the upper hull, sorry, the upper turrets of a lower turret. And then we start with the track, uh, all the track holders, the hatches, lifting hooks, vent covers, handles on the hatches, something on the rear there, I don't know what that is at the moment, I'll look into that. And then we start with the assembly of, I think it's just a new thing that Jones got light, is it something to do with a range finder light, you know, like a, like using a light that sits on top of the uh, commander's uh, cupola. And then we have the assembly of the main gun, which is fairly straightforward. And then we attach the gun to the upper hull, oh sorry, the turret, and then the tracks, spare tracks, onto the side. I'll put like a handle of some description with a chain, it was a piece of chain, but on the uh, on that sprue, but I'll probably replace that with a actual piece of chain, which shouldn't be too difficult to do. And then to finish off, we have the uh, lower hull and the turret together, and then finishing off with the side skirts. So we shall see, it might leave a couple of side skirts off just to show the, uh, the tracks. And that's the actual build. So it's fairly straightforward, but nice simple kit. It should go together nicely if, if anything to do with the last trumpeter kit I've just built, which is the uh, Woody Bill with John, which is a KV122. And I have to say, it's probably one of the best kits fit wise that I've ever built. You know, you always say, no, to me, yeah. but this, this KV122 was absolutely superb. And the, you know, the individual track links, they almost snap together. You know, very little glue to use, and the cleanup was minimal again, as as, as you'll see with John's uh, update from his bum on Monday. So I won't pop up putting one up, uh, an update on at the moment. I'll uh, I'll do a bench update maybe the middle of the week, and then I'll show you how far I've got on mine. But I think that's about it at the moment. So I'll try and leave the link in the comments below for the site where I got the stencils from, if anybody's interested. So I'd just like to thank all my subscribers again for taking the time out of the day to watch. And see, I keep keep picking up, pick, I keep picking up quite a few uh, subscribers at the moment, so, which uh, I'm very happy about. Um, getting sort of get me regular comments off people, which is really nice and. Uh, I'll say I better pick the few new ones up and 
seem to enjoy what I do so I'll just keep plugging away add a few nice uh, different things now and again as I get a bit more confident um, so I think that's about it really so this is going signing off and we shall see you in the middle of the week with a uh, what's on the bench update so this is Greg signing off so goodbye